What's up, guys? Welcome to CFC DP. Back at it again with a little kind of combination episode. Newcastle match review. Looking ahead to Malmo just a little bit. Uh, but first, as always, we're going to check in with Chelsea Look Back. He placed uh, an oldie but a goodie on his page. So we'll go ahead and get that across the pit screen for you. Graham trying to get inside Murray. A goal! Right wing corner, so Knox, the outside left, to take it. Oh, it's a goal! It's a goal scored by the inside right, Graham. I should think quite a few teams are going to have trouble with Chelsea this season. Paris. But Greedy up there again with the attack. Now this could be dangerous. And it's the third goal. Ken Shelito laughing all over his face. I mean, it's actually amazing that they had cameras back then. Because it's like, that is so grainy and whatnot. I think it's 1961, 3-2 win against Sunderland. Um, but yeah, so moving forward to today, we have Brittany Zimmerman, returning guest, ready to go. Brittany, how you doing? Good, good. Working a lot, but good. Yeah, it's good to have a little work-life balance. I know that we were both able to watch the Chelsea-Newcastle game this weekend, and for about 60 minutes, it was kind of like, what's going on? <laughs> you know, we, uh, <laughs> it's kind of like, uh... Did you all like coordinate anything at all today? Mm -hmm. Are we going to show up maybe? Yeah. That's, that's pretty much, I was like, all right, uh, this is, it's going to be one of those days, you know, like when it's like, all right, I guess we didn't. Okay. So like when we play Newcastle, it seems like always when we go to St. James's park, we always have a difficult time there to be honest with you. Um, and it looked like it was, like we said, it was going to be trending towards that for the first 60 minutes. But then Reese James kind of just went super sane and was like, I'm going to put this team on my back. Can you talk to me a little bit about Reese James and what you saw from him at that game? Obviously, the goals were impressive, but just kind of overall. Just in general, I think Reese has been trending up lately, which is a great thing for us. I know for a while they were playing Absi in that position and – I've always been a huge Reese James fan. I think he's one of the most talented academy products we have, especially in our starting lineup. Nothing against Mason. I love Mason. I think Mason's super talented. But just his outlook and his ability to judge the field, to judge positioning, to really be able to see and be creative, even in that you know left wing back or left back spot is incredible. And his just ability to almost play fearlessly if that makes mm -hmm. sense. Like yeah. he's willing to take on his man. He's willing to step up. He's willing to try and create and get the ball where it needs to be to get the goals or, you know, to just get us in down into that half. And I feel like it was so tough for that first 60 minutes to figure out how to break down that, you know, cause they had a heavy, they played five at the back, you know, it's mm -hmm. a low block. And at times they were pulling us up and off, which was, not ideal for Kai, but he has such a great mentality, I think, as well, that he's just always – he's always willing to be a workhorse and to do what he needs to do for the team to win. And I think it was great to watch him step up and kind of step into that role, very reminiscent of, like, the early John Terry days almost. Yeah. Of, like, being – I'm if no one else is going to do this, fine, I'll do it myself kind of thing. Exactly. I mean, and overall, I think Reese, like you said, has been trending up and he's really put on his shooting boots this season. He's got four goals thus far. He in Premier League and he has been just unbelievable to watch as well. And it wasn't a game where we had all of our horses in there. It was a late scratch for Mason Mount due to illness. Um, Thomas Tuchel did confirm today that he had tested negative for COVID. So it's not COVID. It's just a regular illness. So he won't be out for hopefully a too significant amount of time. He is, will not be in the Malmo squad. He also said today, what do you, you know? A lot of people were pretty, um, what am I going to say? They were pretty kind of half and half on Ziyech starting, I, you know, with Pulisic out at that time, still 
I think people were a little afraid. I, you know, what is your opinion on Ziyech? I just feel like he's the most pol- polarizing player. There are some people that still rate him, but I just I watch him and I just get so frustrated with his body language. But you know, just like he did against um, in the Carabao Cup, he gets an assist and it's like, well, you know, that's positive. But other than that, I just I can't watch him out there. His body language just is upsetting to me. I think he's one of or was one of the most exciting players coming in from that window. He played phenomenally for AX. Wherever he was on the field, he was a wizard. And I think that's what we expected, but I don't think he expected the physicality yeah. and how much he would literally have to work and have mm-hmm. to be more creative than just, oh, run down yonder and let me kick you the ball. And his body language for sure is concerning, especially because if something doesn't go his way, it's an automatically like he inverts into himself and looks all dejected. And it kind of continues for him. And I still think for most part he tries, but it's not mm-hmm. like, I, I just, I never feel like he's always giving 110%. And even when he was shooting and like, sure, he had some, excellent opportunities the ball off the bar um the offsides goal obviously like he he can get into such great positions and can be such a phenomenal player but i think mentally he's just not in it and i think that's the issue and i think that's why people want to back him but with the way he acts it's hard yeah, I mean, he's checked out, I think. I, I, and I agree with you. It just looks like he's dejected. You know, I think I, – I haven't said this, and I haven't heard anyone else say this really, but he was such good buddies with Zuma that we have that we could tell from, like, social media posts, and they're always, you know, going at it with – not, like, going at it fighting, but, like, you know what I'm saying? They're all razzing each other. And I think Zuma leaving was kind of, like, the final straw for him. He doesn't – I don't feel like – He's just like connected with this team. And I think that the work rate that you mentioned, it's it was different from Frank to Tuchel because Tuchel demands his front players to press. It, it you just have to have it. If you don't have Mason Mount in there, for example, who you know who's gonna press 24-7, even pretty much any of the like political press, Hudson Adoy will press pretty well. But overall, when you see Ziesh, he just kind of just runs around and like flails his arm around and he doesn't really offer anything in terms of a pressing aspect. So it's almost like, you know, it's just not a fit and it's not, he's not Tuchel's player. Lampard brought him in. And I think that's something that needs to be discussed. But at the same time, I feel like they're playing him a little bit out of need, but they need to be able to sell him in, in the summer. And I think that shouldn't be an issue, to be honest with you. I think, you know, Italian clubs will come calling for him. Maybe Ajax will take him back, German clubs. You know what I mean? La Liga, perhaps. But the league is not a good fit, as you said. Um, you know, I also just wanted to talk a little bit about um, Callum hudson Adoy too. Because I just, I just get so impressed with him at that left wing, to be honest with you. I, I just don't. It's. I know he's in a, a purple patch right now. Everything's going great. He's contributing goals and assists. He's putting balls in the box. He's taking people on. I just wonder what took Tuchel so long to get him these minutes. It took it for it to be ground zero in terms of attackers in depth for him to get this spot. You know what I mean? So I also wonder what it's going to be like when Timo, you know, Pulisic is back now. But when Timo comes back, uh, you know, is Callum going to be relegated to second string wing back? You know what I mean? I feel like he's another polarizing player as mm-hmm. well as Pulisic is, a, especially in the Twitter sphere. There are yeah. those three players, ZH, um, Cho and Pulisic are like the most polarizing players. And I think it's, for I mean, I know for CH obviously a lot of it is his body language and his work rate just really isn't there. And I think to add on to the end of that, I think also that like you said, it's he's not a fit in this squad, and I think that's the worst problem, is there's yeah. not really a position for him to play. So I, I think it's partially not his fault, but partially is. Um for Cho, I I, I love Cho. I mean, mm. I think he does great wherever they put him. I think he's a fantastic talent. I think there are times that he, just like every other gun player, he goes through 
those spurts where he has really, really great games. And then sometimes he has not so great games. And then automatically mm-hmm. it's like, people want, well, you suck. And I'm like, okay, that he's like, what? 2022, 20, I think. Yeah. And I think it took him so long because at least from my experience with intense, intense injuries that can be tweaked and it's an automatic, okay, you're out for the next four months kind of thing. Right, yeah. Especially with both, um, you can mention him and RLC who's come back and made this like huge statement with Tuchel as well. Mm-hmm. I think a lot of it's just mentally instilling the confidence in not only their training, but how they're preparing And I think that's what he's done. He's gotten Cho to a place where he can rely on him no matter where he plays, but he knows that obviously, and I believe he's even stated that left wing is his preferred position. And I, I -hmm. love Cho on the left wing, obviously. Um, (laughs) Pulisic is a player who has my heart because he, I I mean, he's my second favorite U.S. men's player ever besides Clint Dempsey. Um, so I, I think it's going to be hard for Christian, but I also think Christian can kind of swing into the middle where it would still allow to show to play on that left wing. And I like the balance that those two can create together. Mm-hmm. I mean, I, I think Cho is trending up. I, I don't know why people are so weird about him and think he's this terrible player. He's not. Um, I don't think he takes on his man as much as he did previously. Mm-hmm. I think he's working up towards it. And I definitely saw it more in Newcastle where he was going down the line, taking on the players and showing, you know, his skill and getting in and around the defense and laying balls in for what we hope with goals. They, they didn't come, but he, he was doing it more. And I think it's, I think it just took two goals to like really instill in him that, you know, even though you've had this terrible injury, you've had all this noise around you, just keep your head down and focus. And I mean, it's working for Cho and it's for sure working for LC as well. I think, Ruben has also really, really shown up this season for us. And he's been fantastic. And it was a little bit surprising to see that he did have a bit of an injury and did not feature against Newcastle. I think that would have been a great game for him to continue to go. Um, He appears to be that he will be in the squad for Malmo. So I would expect um, probably both of them to start Callum and Ruben, to be honest, to continue this uh, run of form for them. Also, I just kind of wanted to talk a little bit just more about the attack because we do know Pulisic is coming back. He is in the squad for Malmo, so potentially we could see a cameo appearance for him. He definitely won't start, but we'll see a cameo appearance from him, I think, later in the match if everything is all sealed up. But when you talk about our attacking depth, right, no one seems to be sold on Ziyech. Callum is not hit or miss, but he is hit or miss in his opportunities to give him. I th- hear, hear all this talk about Eden Hazard. All this talk about Eden Hazard links. Roman Abramovich wants him and whatnot. And I voiced it in a previous episode that I have. And I don't think that Eden Hazard is a player I would bring in if it ruins your plans for the future. If you have a transfer amount, for example, that uh, you want to get Declan Rice or Shua Many or Kunde or Delict or whoever it is, a nice young and upcoming player that lowers that age profile to where – the rest of the squad pretty much is. I mean, if you look at Mount, James, hudson Adoy, Christensen, you want to start lowering your age profile gradually while still keeping some veterans because you want to elongate these careers of these guys and get them to be as, uh, you know, as close to title contention as you can for the longest amount of time. But yet we look at what our attacking depth is and how depleted it was at times. What do you think about Eden Hazard coming back potentially? It, it's it's pulling at my heartstrings, but my brain's kind of telling me I don't want to screw up what we have going. I've had this conversation with a couple of friends, um, Trav and Tyler, and I think my biggest issue and like I just yeah, obviously you know heartstrings. You're attached to that player, but you also have to realize like if you're constantly harping on players being out all the time for injuries, Mm -hmm. not fully having a great work rate. And that's very big for Tuchel. What's the point of bringing him back then? Mm -hmm. He does have, I believe my friend Trav said he has a degenerative ankle disorder or something. So like he's continually at risk for being injured and like, sure he would be a phenomenal leader. You know, he's been in that role, but when you have kids in the Academy, like, um, I think he sold Lewis Bait. He was one of my favorites. But, like, you know, Harvey Vale, um, uh, Jude Sinsabelle, 
you know, kids like that in the academy that have that talent to become the next, you know, Mason Mount, Reese James, you know, to help with the work rate up front with Lukaku and Timo. Um, what's the point? He's getting older. Right. You know, our squad is, like you said, progressively getting younger besides our back line, which that's, you know, an, another contention point with who who we're going to have next year for a back line. So right. do we really want to spend the funds on Hazard when we could potentially have Rudy leaving? We could potentially have AC leaving. Mm-hmm. Tiago might be done. You know, like, do we really want to put our eggs in that basket again for somebody who could potentially – kind of be like Polistic has been writing the payroll, but in the training center. Yeah. And I think like, to me though, the overriding factor in this is Roman Abramovich though. If he, if he says, you know what, I'm going to be able, if I want him back, that's kind of the, the end game. You know what I mean though? And that's what the reports have been is that Roman Abramovich is the one that's pushing to bring him back to the club. So it's kind of a factor that you have to weigh, but you know, I think at the same time that if Eden Hazard would have to come back, it would have to be on perfect terms. You would have to have, a, you know, an agreement that, hey, man, you're a super sub. You're, you're going to start in certain games for sure, you know, if if we need you to. But you're primarily, you're primarily, you know, your main role is going to be as a sub. Would that work is one of the questions. And like you said, we need to be able to keep funds available. I think that a, a mid, our midfielders, I think this season, the injuries that they've had thus far, Conte has been on and off uh, with injury. Kovacic just goes down with a hamstring. You're going to have to bring in a midfielder, whether that's a Declan Rice, a Shuameni, uh, you know, whatever the names have been listed previously. Um, so you don't ruin that for this season. But, you know, they could say, hey, we're a, a winger short. And then they go that way. It's tough to say. It's tough to speculate because you don't know how Tuchel would feel on the idea necessarily. And I feel like between him and Abramovich, uh, that would be key, uh, you know, their discussion on how that would work overall. Um, I just want to touch on a few other kind of news items, so to speak, before we briefly touch on Malmo. I don't think we need to talk a super big amount about it. Um, Billy Gilmore. His loan at Norwich has not been as successful as we all kind of thought it would be. Uh, you know, um, Farke runs a similar system to Chelsea uh, with sixes. And, uh, you know, overall, we haven't seen Billy play starting a Premier League game since September 18th. You know, Thomas like- Tuchel said, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Thomas Tuchel said today in his uh, press conference that he spoke with uh, Daniel about it. He was happy to meet Billy, at, you know, against Norwich. I think that he just said, "Hey, you got to start playing him, or we're going to call him back." And Billy, at this point, with Ruben playing well, we have four midfielders and Saul as well, so technically five. So I don't think Billy would come back to play, but we could potentially send him out on a different loan, um, perhaps. I, I just wondered what your thoughts were. I, I, I'm not saying I've watched a lot of Norwich games thus far, but I know that Billy has played well in those games, but. I feel like uh, Norwich is kind of taking a stance against him as a lone player, for uh, for instance. Yeah, I, I think for sure that there's going to be a point. Um, I, I mean, I only watch Norwich when Sargent starts, but that's just I have a vested interest in the men's team for mm-hmm. the U.S. Um, but I, I mean, I think he's been a phenomenal player for them. He's usually one of their best players on the pitch, if not the best player on the pitch. But like you said, with our mid, I mean, granted, now we have Ruben is was injured for a little bit. Um, you know, obviously, Conte's in and out. He's getting older. His injuries are becoming a factor. Granted, they've been phenomenal with managing Conte. I still don't think even with injuries that Billy would play a ton with us. Um, I would hope that if he doesn't start playing, that they would recall him and try to work in that January window for, you know, maybe somewhere like, Burnley or, you know, I think, uh, well, Gallagher's already on a loan to like Crystal Palace, so we can't send two loan players there. But, you know, like it's a team that plays a similar structure to us but could actually benefit from having him in midfield yeah. and still get him the minutes that he needs. It would be tough because, like, I don't think that you would want to take him out of the Premier League, though. 
Yeah, it, it, he's been there at this point. I I don't know if alone to the Bundesliga, you know, or Serie A or La Liga would benefit him that much. But then you have to kind of consider, hey, where where will where will we send him? Um, so it's something that definitely needs to be considered. I just thought it was interesting that Tuchel had talked about it today because that kind of put some wood on the fire of him potentially being called back and sent on a different loan. So I think there are certain oh, places, ahead, yeah. but like if you were to go to somewhere in Germany, like mm-hmm. as much as I love it, somewhere like you know uh, a Bayern, not Bayern, but Bayer <laughs> Leverkusen um, mm-hmm. or BVB, they're you know usually at the top they have relatively good teams, and it would get sure. him first team minutes, and they tend to work out well for the most part coming into the Premier League since he's already been there. He kind of knows and can add a little bit of depth to their squads, but. Mm-hmm. I kind of agree that it would be hard to want to move him outside of the Premier League. I just don't think Norwich in general is good for him, and it's not doing anything for him at this point, especially with him not playing. <laughs> yeah, it's it's kind of toxic over there, to be honest with you, that I've seen thus far. Uh, so we'll just briefly touch on Malmo. Um, who are some players that you're looking to see get some minutes against Malmo? I think we all kind of know that we're going to take care of business over there. I mean, you never know, obviously, but... Uh, who are some players that you'd like to see get some minutes? In reality, I feel like, especially because it is such a quick turnaround from, you know, the weekend game at Newcastle, which was midday Saturday. You know, it's midday on Tuesday for them. Um, I obviously still see Mendy and Cole. I, I don't see that changing. I think we might see Chilabla, uh, Ch- Ch- <laughs> Trevor. Yeah. Because <it's laughs> when he can't talk today. <laughs> <laughs> um, we might see him. We might see Sar, um, especially with Silva getting older and all of that. You know, the, he's had a lot of minutes in the tank recently. Mm-hmm. Um, I definitely see somebody like an RLC coming in, especially with God knows what's going on with Conte and Koba still out. Mm-hmm. Um, I have a feeling, despite how well they're playing, we might not see Chilwell or James. Um, I think we see Apsi come in. I definitely think we'll probably see Alonzo come in. Just to get them some minutes, um, I foresee Jorginho still still being a starter. Um, I, I definitely think Cho will be up there. Um, it'd be interesting. I, I don't think we'll see Christian start for various reasons besides the fact that we, like, I don't know, don't want him to get injured. Um, but up top, that's, that's such a... I've seen a lot know, of shots for like, Barkley. I've seen a lot of shots for Barkley to start at striker, kind of like a center forward type deal. You know, at this point, as much as a joke of I make of this, just start Alonzo up there. He thinks he's a striker anyway. Just <laughs> why not? Yeah, <laughs> you know, let, him, let him go have some fun or something. <laughs> like, I thought it was. Interesting you want to that... buy a striker by all means. <laughs> I thought it was interesting that Kai and Cho kind of came out earlier in the match, so like to potentially that could lead to them getting the start at first. Um, I mean, I don't know. Barkley at striker, maybe. Maybe. <laughs> Against Malmo? I mean, you can't like Let's say Just play no. Danny Drinkwater while we're at it. Exactly, right? I that's mean, a, who that's, knows? That's maybe... what we need to recall. Yeah, absolutely. Danny Drinkwater, bring him back. <laughs> start his remontada. <laughs> Please, no. Yeah. Um, but I know Harvey Vale has been training with the first team, so mm-hmm. maybe he'll get to make his first appearance in the- <laughs> for Chelsea in the Champions League. Maybe though. Probably I mean, not, definitely- but it's definitely possible if the scoreline is kind of trending a certain way, because I think it is five subs. Um yes. so why not? I guess it, it you know, if we have it all wrapped up. But traveling to the- some of these lower teams in a way can be somewhat difficult from time to time so you know as you know manchester united going to young boys and uh things like that you know it can be difficult so we definitely need to be on our a game at least in the beginning for the first you know 30 minutes get up quickly for sure and it seems like they structure similarly to a lot of the top tier teams that we've already played in the premier league um it looks like their main formation is a four two three one which for us is nice granted we don't have our normal strikers so it would have been a perfect game for lukaku but i think this is a game especially even that middle open for cho to really make his mark especially if they start him um 
I foresee maybe, you know, if we do start Kai, it, it could be a potentially, you know, confidence boosting game for him if he can get the ball in the, in the net. Um, but I think we still do have enough fight to, I don't want to say embarrass them, but, you know, make it a decent few goals. And yeah. hopefully, you know, we can get some people like Pulisic, maybe Harvey Bale, um, you know, hell, even bring in Chilwell and um, James at the end to close it out. You know, yeah. get some, maybe Seesaw on midfield might be another one that we could throw in. Um, RLC for sure. Um, if RLC scores tomorrow, I might cry, <sighs> but it's fine. He's been trending towards it, though, to be honest with you. It's, He's had some good coming. opportunities. It is coming, for sure. But overall, I don't think it should be too big of a of an issue. We should, you know, make pretty light work. But it is an earlier game tomorrow, so we play in the early window. So uh, be able to get that over with and watch some real games afterwards. So we'll see how it goes. Yeah, let's hope my uh, meeting tomorrow that's at 1 o'clock. Goes quick. <laughs> yeah, it's brief. Bad connection. <laughs> wi Fi doesn't work. Sorry. Oh, sorry. I'm sick. <laughs> Goodbye. <laughs> well, Brittany, thank you so much for coming on. I really appreciate it. Oh, of course. Anytime. Yep. Well, go ahead and like, subscribe, comment on this video, uh, as well as follow me and Brittany on Twitter. I will put the links in the bio. Also, I've started Twitch streaming. I'm not sure why I'm kind of a trash FIFA player, but I've had some pretty good fun playing with it lately. So <laughs> <laughs> I opened a bunch of packs yesterday, too. We packed some really good players. So I have those clips up on Twitch, and that will be in the bio as well. So we will see how tomorrow goes. Should be an easy game, relatively. They never are easy, though, when we say they're easy. So, you know, if Malmo goes True. up 2 0, 2 0 really quickly, don't, don't yell at me or Brittany. So <laughs> <laughs> it's our fault. <laughs> all right well thanks everyone thanks for watching the video remember to follow like subscribe all that good stuff thank you and have a good night